you know, one other thing I'm wondering if this will have any impact on these relationships is is the U.S. attempt to either become more energy independent or switch to green energy, be less dependent on oil. Will that affect the balance in any way? It's a good question. I, you know, I I don't know if I know enough about China's alternative energy sources to really have a, a, to be confident about the answer. But in the Gulf region, within the GCC at least, less so in the case of Iran, there is not a move away from, excuse me, not a move away from oil by any means, but there is an awareness among all of those states that the oil and natural gas will at some point run out. It's not, it's not, they're not that worried about the politics shifting away from it, but they're not really worried at all about that. But there is like a, like a, an awareness that the oil, the demand might decrease, which will bring the price down, but also at some point it will run out. And so they themselves, especially recently Saudi Arabia, have been trying to make their own major investments in alternative energy. And so, and what they're trying to do, and I don't know, frankly, I don't know enough about the science to know whether they'll be successful. They're trying to maintain their level of influence on the global energy market after, you know, look, looking beyond oil and natural gas. They're hoping to be able to be in a similar position, either through that or through their own international investments. So they're going to try and control the sun. <laughs> that, that sort of M MBS would like nothing more than to control the sun. <laughs> That's why Biden wants to block out the sun. Um, not unlike Mr. Burns. Yes, exactly. Did you guys miss that story? Oh, no, I caught that story. Okay. I'm thinking about the sun now. Uh, well, so uh, what would the Middle East look like if you know, the CCP or communist China were just simply not involved anymore? That's a, that's a very interesting question. Well, the first thing that comes to my mind, but this sort of betrays my own sort of interests and biases, I think, is it would be in the, not immediate term, but even in the short term, it would be fairly devastating to much of Iran's military capabilities and would dramatically shift the balance of power in the Gulf. I don't mean the Gulf region necessarily, but in like literally in the Persian Gulf to the GCC and, and US, right? Our, our partners there. Um, because the IRGCN, the um, uh, Islamic uh, Revolutionary Guard Corps Navy, which has responsibility over the Gulf over the last 10 years has shifted almost entirely from legacy Norwegian weapons platforms and ships, you know, bought under the Shah. It's now almost entirely Chinese made um, fast attack boats, silkworm missiles along the coast, um, you know, and, and other, other such weapons. And those need upkeep. They're pretty often trying to upgrade and replace them. If that were gone, Iranian naval capabilities would be hard. It would take a long time for them to build back up. They get a little bit of assistance from North Korea, but their own ability is now just about matched North Korea in that regard. Um, so it, it would change that, which I think would be very beneficial to the US. I think that it would, despite these protests inside Iran, it would be tremendously disruptive to the Iranian economy in an unpredictable way. And by that, I mean, would people blame China for X? I mean, this would depend on why China withdrew from the region, or would they blame us if it was perceived that we had driven China out and this had caused some sort of economic calamity. 
That part I'm not sure of. Um, I think that it would make the Saudis and Emiratis in particular, by necessity, be a bit more receptive to US cordial requests about production and in the case of UAE, about doing business with a wide range of, of sanctioned actors, not just Chinese. Um, I think it would greatly strengthen the US position almost immediately. My concern, and don't get me wrong, I would love that. What I think if that were to happen, what we would have to be careful of, which is something I think we've seen play out, we were seen play out a little bit before the Russian invasion of Ukraine in Europe, would be let's say that happens. Then I think it becomes much more tempting in a way for a US president to actually start to withdraw from the region. You start to get um, maybe American citizens like, well, what are we really doing there? Why do we need to be involved at all? Um, I sort of got it when it was about countering China, but I know it. And my concern would be, and again, the context of this obviously would matter, that we would then actually withdraw, and that would allow either a return of China or other bad actors to, to fill in that gap. And so I think that any US administration that was in place at the time of a major Chinese pullback for whatever reason would really have to do a very good job of messaging to the American public why it was important that the US actually um, to explain the importance of the Middle East to to the Ameri to, to the American to American voters. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. If uh, anyone watching wants to follow you, where should they go? Yeah, you'd think that would be an easy question to answer, but um, historically, I would say you could follow me on Twitter now X. You're still welcome to do that at the moment to have the account locked, but I'll accept anyone who, who appears to be a real human. Um, I'm still sort of grappling with the Musk situation. Um, I'm not thrilled with doing anything that benefits him, even if it's in a minor way. Um, but you can also, um, and it'll be revamped you know, sometime in, in the next couple of weeks, um, my website, jonathancrystal.com. Um, as well, usually has uh, updates on uh, publications, things like that uh, as well. Great. Yeah, thanks for joining us. There was a lot of things that I'd never have thought of before. You're welcome. It's always fun uh, to talk about these issues. They are very complicated, and um, it's good to actually have time to get into them a bit, because the lack of time means that so much of the U.S. media just ignores them. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's I think it came out pretty clearly in this uh, this interview that things these things are always very complex. Indeed. Thank you. I guess this is the part of the podcast where we go off the rails, but if we don't have oil from the Middle East, the rail the the cart won't go anywhere. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. I thought that, you know, America was essentially energy independent according to what we just learned in this interview. I was surprised about that because that's always that's a that's a big thing in uh, like you know uh, political debates now saying like oh you know the Biden has made us not ener energy dependent. Well, energy independence it depends how you define energy independence. Like if we had an American does, does, does the, does about the U.S. produce as much as we consume? Roughly, yes, but it's not strictly independent because as we've covered on America Uncovered, like the. A lot of times it's cheaper to export US oil and import refined oil or or crude oil from other countries that we can process in our refineries, which are designed for a different type of oil. Than we produce right. for so, some reason. So even though there might be a, a balance overall, we're still reliant on exports and imports, which, I mean, it's kind of crazy when you think about it, like we really should just, you know, redo our refineries and fix that problem so we're not so dependent on other countries. I remember like earlier this year, I think 
Biden, or maybe last year when the oil prices were really spiked, and Biden was talking about getting oil from, you know, Venezuela. new sources like Venezuela, yeah. uh, which, like, I think we work with enough authoritarian regimes to get our oil. We don't need to add more. I mean, but on the other hand, we're really used to working with authoritarian regimes for our, our oil. So, so. We're, so we're good at it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good. Well, what? Debatable. <laughs> well, what, we're what competent this, at it. What the no. me think, That's though, debate. is yeah. like, it's going to be harder for the China to, for the CCP to do this thing where they're trying to use countries like Iran and Russia and like form this like coalition, right, to kind of hedge themselves against um, the U.S. economic system. Things like, oh, if we can get other countries to accept RMB, then we don't have to worry as much about getting sanctioned by the US. You know, if we were to pull a Russia and invade Taiwan, for right. example. But countries don't really want RMB because RMB is useless unless you're using it to buy stuff from China. Yeah. And but like even in a country that is receptive to like trading more with China, right? Because Iran is already a pariah state. So they are sanctioned from doing trade with a lot of countries. Even that system is not working for Iran and China because now there are domestic tensions within Iran that they don't like the flood of cheap Chinese goods that's coming over the border because it's wrecking their own economy. So will China, will the CCP be able to use like this economic power to shield themselves from U.S. sanctions? It might not be as simple as they are trying to plot out right now. You know, in some ways, China's giving Iran and the U.S. common ground. Which is? Not liking the flood of cheap Chinese good. Right. I mean, interestingly- Ad for Timu <laughs> interrupts the podcast. <laughs> That's George Sheehan. Yeah. Yeah, it, interestingly, the Iranian public seems to be more concerned about the issue of cheap Chinese imports than the U.S. public. It's because we lost the manufacturing base, like- a long 30 time years ago, ago yeah. versus now. Yeah. 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 All those people don't have jobs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, indeed. So we might not even be able to manufacture more rails to go off. To, of. to go off of. Yeah. That's why we go off the rails on this show. We don't <laughs> want to be dependent on China for the rails. <laughs> High speed rail. <laughs>